Um, so today's feature presenter speaker is Nicole McAuliffe, our chapter nutrition specialist. Um, her company is Create Wellbeing Group, and she's been in business for more than 17 years with her clinic in Kew. Um, together with her husband, Daniel, they have two children, Will and Miles, as well as two pets, Hardy the Whippet and Muffin the Rabbit. Her hobbies and interests include her radio show, adventure travel, running clubs and fun runs, book clubs, Pilates, yoga, gym, bike riding and camping. Uh, she's been uh, living in Melbourne for more than 50 years. Um, her previous job types include national training manager, executive coach and facilitator, mentor, radio presenter, public speaker, uh, change management consultant, food coach and pharmacy nutritionist. Her burning desire is to run her only her, to run her own fully integrated health clinic. Purpose is to educate and motivate men and women to enhance their nutritional health and well-being for their longevity and for future generations. Something here no one knows about her, and there's quite a few things, but I'll only touch on one, which is that she knows how to drive a forklift. So <laughs> that's unusual. <laughs> and um, uh, her key to success is building strong, lifelong connections with her clients and seeing them live long and healthy lives, building great connections with clients' networks, having a clear marketing plan, great peer support and, fam and, fa and family. Um, so now, ladies and gentlemen and members and guests, I would like to introduce to you uh, Nicole. Oh, over to you, Nicole. Thank you. I'll just put my 10-minute timer on. So I uh, thought I'd start with a, a quote and also end with a quote. Um, and I'm very passionate about food and its impact on health and well-being. And I believe we are what we eat. Um, and most of our solutions that we can find for health conditions, acute or chronic, can be found in our food. Um, so I think that's a really good way to start. Um, as Helen's mentioned, um, my name's Cole McCall, if I'm a clinical nutritionist. I have a husband and two boys, um, a son and a charity that I support, Heart Kids, uh, like to keep fit. And I also am co-host of a radio show with the lovely Jacinta McNina there in the bottom left-hand corner. Um, passion and purpose is to educate and motivate men and women to enhance their nutritional health and well-being for their future longevity and for future generations. So that is what motivates me. And um, I think, you know, to know your why is really important. And this is my why, why I do what I do. A little bit of a quick background. Um, you may already know this, that um, I have many degrees. Uh, first studied science at Melbourne Uni, did an MBA at Monash, and then did my nutritional medicine degree at um, Endeavour uh, and have you know uh, qualifications and accreditations with Nutrition Australia and ANTA um, and have also got a coaching background. Um, worked with many, 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 many organisations over the years. This is just a few of them and I won't go into all of the detail about those because I'd like to talk to you about other interesting things about what I do with my business. So key offerings three key components to what I offer. The key one is my face-to-face -face consultations and now they're face-to-face -face and also telehealth. The initial consultation is a 60-minute consultation which includes a full health history and subsequent consultations are 30 minutes in length. I have a new 15-minute acute consult for current uh, practitioners and people wanting to trial nutrition and see what it's all about. So that is something new. I have my monthly workshops, which you've seen advertised through BNI. Um, I used to run those face to face, but I also run them virtually now. And each year I do a wellbeing retreat. So hopefully 2021, we'll have our April, May and October, November retreats. So listen out for those very soon. Um, a little bit of information around the other things that I do in my business. Uh, obviously, there's a number of key areas that I focus in on. I'm going to talk about gut health in particular, which is my specialisation today. 
Um, other things that people come to me for are increased energy, reducing stress levels, reducing pain and inflammation, um, balancing hormones and building immunity. So they're some of the key things that I focus in on with my health practice. Um, this is one of the workshops that I've run, and this is an hour and a half session on the gut-brain connection. Today, I'm going to try and give you a little snippet of that uh, today so that you can understand what goes on in the workshops and the sort of work that I do. So without further ado, I'll go into a little bit further around the gut-brain connection. So who here has heard of the saying, I've got butterflies in my stomach? You might have heard that before. Um, and so there's, there's this new science around the gut and the brain and the connection there. Um, there is a nerve called the vagus nerve that runs directly from the gut to the brain. And I think we used to believe that it was the brain that sent that message to the gut. Now we know that 90% of it, it's the other way around, that the gut actually sends messages to the brain. And there, this involves, um, I guess, two, two key things is that there's a, a very tight connection between the gut and the brain and there's no need for any independent kind of brain center to decide what to do um, with the amount of nerves that are in our gut. The nervous system that's in our gut is called the enteric nervous system and it houses a whole lot of neurotransmitters. Um, it has more nerves than your spinal cord. So that's quite fascinating fact in itself. And that's why it's often um, called the second brain. Um, it controls those really complex processes of digestion to absorb nutrients and the, and the flow of food. Um, and these nerves speak to each other and to other cells in the body by these chemical messages, messengers called the neurotransmitters. Now, many of these neurotransmitters have a really strong effect on our mood. Um, and these are made in our gut. You might have heard that stat before, about 95% of serotonin is made in your gut, not your brain. So people taking SSRIs, which are serotonin reuptake inhibitors, antidepressants, um, they, they work on the brain, but actually 95% of the serotonin is made in our gut. And that's why it's so important to look after it. Look, look after it. The immune system of the gut is so important um, because um, eating and drinking is a big portal for where microbes can get into our body and disease can get into our body. Um, you know, 75% of our immune system also sits in our gut. Um, and these immune cells um, can move through the entire body, um, causing inflammation just about anywhere, and they're activated by things in the gut and they can potentially wreak havoc. Um, including, including the potential to uh, increase inflammation in the brain as well. Um, so important part of this whole picture here, which you're looking at is that interaction, the influence on the gut influences the neurotransmitters, can influence stress, anxiety, mood and behavior. And in turn, the brain can influence um, our motility, all of the different secretions in the gut to make it work effectively, nu nutrient uh, delivery and microbial balance. So let's talk a little bit about microbes. So um, you have billions of good microbes in your gut living happily, and they do amazing things like digesting certain foods, making certain vitamins, and even helping to regulate inflammation. Um, and evidence is now showing that your gut microbes can even impact our mood. Um, and, and even more um, the serious effects of mental health um, as well. So it's becoming really clear that, um, a, you know, a healthy gut goes hand in hand with a healthy brain. So I always say good food equals good mood. So what you might be asking is uh, how do you feed your brain um, and therefore support your mood? And of course, a variety of minimally processed nutrient dense foods are required because no nutrient works alone. Um, there are some many great foods that support our gut brain connection. Um, so consider things like eating more fiber, um, our omega-3 fats. So fiber in our fruits and our vegetables our nuts and our seeds help to feed our gut microbes. Um, and our omega-3 fats in fatty fish, walnuts, algae, and seeds like flax, chia, are very well known for inflammation and um, great brain boosters. And here's just a summary of some of those things there. 
So some of the things that support our brain on the flip side, having boundaries, saying no, getting great sleep, mindfulness, um, breathing, solitude, time for nature and getting out there and also having that positive look. So there's two sides to tackle um, that gut brain connection and gut health issues. Um, so if you're looking to improve, improve your gut health more um, and looking for a tailored approach, um, this is where I step in as a clinical nutritionist. I do a very extensive health history. I look at what's going on for an individual and um, start to support them in getting and identifying what's going on in their gut issues and supporting that with appropriate foods and nutrients. Uh, some of those nutrients also, there's some amazing products out there, curcumin, glutamine, um, aloe vera, peppermint are also amazing gut soothers as well as probiotics and that's sort of more the, the supplement side of things. I don't know if you can see that. This one is one of my favourite supplements. I'll show you uh, after the presentation. I'll turn my background off. It's called Gut Relief. Um, so we also prescribe as well as look at uh, foods to support us. All right, so going back to more of my business, my ideal client is someone who might have gut issues, i.e. the bloating in the IBS, might be stressed, time poor, feeling unwell. They might have had multiple GP visits and tests and there's no signal about what's going on for them and they still can't get that, that um, relief and they're quite motivated for change. You want to send them my way to start helping them with their um their gut issues. I have an offer. This is um, quite an expensive exercise to do a um, look at your microbiome, which is your gut bacteria, but you can do a DNA test um, and get a gut health report. These tests are $350 to run, um, but this includes a consult and testing and a health report and a debrief and a tailored wellness plan um, for anybody you know that might be having gut issues. And this is a really good diagnostic tool and test, um, not just looking at um, the microbes themselves, but the DNA. So there's other things that can be picked up here as well. A little offer for our BNI members is a free 15 minute acute telehealth consult to boost your gut health. Um, so that concludes my presentation today. I'd love it if you could like and follow my social media pages where I post more about the gut brain connection and gut health. And I'm happy to take any questions if there is time to do so. Helen, how are we going for time? Um, you've got a few minutes. I'm happy to take any questions. I'll give you one. Great. Uh, I'm on Nexium for my gut. Yes. Because I've had uh, esophageal problems and so forth. So obviously, with uh, working, diet, and stress. Uh, that gut one that you showed, is that it's like a substitute for Nexium? Yeah, the antacid just means um, so Nexium is an antacid. It's a, what we call a proton pump inhibitor. And so, what you would want to do is do something that absolutely calms and soothes. Uh, and lowers the gastric acid in the body. You could use something like that. There's some more tailored things that are associated with that, which is about getting more alkalinity um, into the diet. So um, I would go with the more plant-based diet um, and um, reducing the acidic foods, which are actually more animal-based. So that would be my starting point. Okay, I better put in a referral for you then. <laughs> yes. Turmeric's great, which is in the gut relief as well. I have a um, question. Yes. Is there a nutritional difference between fresh and frozen vegetables? Um, it's very, very closely aligned. Often we would say if you can't get fresh, frozen is a really good second best. Sometimes if something's been sitting in the supermarket shelf for a long time, you lose its vitamin C students so that's been picked. And something that's been snap frozen uh, might have come straight from the tree and then frozen. Um, the only difference is that the cell wall kind of disassociates when we freeze something. So fresh is great. Frozen's a very good second best. Yeah. Okay. Sort of, sort of second best, but okay. Yeah, some food's different. So, um, yeah, I'd say, you know, things like berries are great to have on hand and have frozen, and I think they um, eat equally well and have some great vitamin C content in them. 
Thanks. Yeah. Hi, Nicole, Rita. Um, what are the inflammatory food? What are the typical ones? Inflammatory ones or anti-inflammatory ones? Uh, on your table, it says avoid inflammatory food. Yeah, so I'm just going to go back. Inflammatory foods are those that are highly processed. Sugar is a really big inflammatory food, mm -hmm. so it ca causes a whole lot of inflammatory processes. Anything that the body doesn't recognise as food, which is anything that is synthetic in any way, um, your body will set off an immune response. And what you want to do is minimise that. So um, you don't want to have an immune response where your body goes, I don't understand what that is. So um, even something like putting some protein in a microwave disassociates the proteins. And so when your body eats it, it goes, I don't know what that is. Set off an inflammatory response, sets mm -hmm. off all of the immune cells to go and tackle that food, um, tackle that thing in the gut. So um, inflammatory foods generally um, in, the, in the natural sense, um, some of the animal products are more inflammatory than our plant products. So if you wanted a very anti-inflammatory diet, you would keep your um, animal-based products to, um, you know, the re recommended dietary intake requirement and boost up your plant products, which are, are low inflammatory. Having said that, omega-3, which is in our fish, um, and olive, um, olive oil and also in our avocados is one of the biggest anti-inflammatory foods. And so it's turmeric, but turmeric um, as a supplement is, they're, they're the, I guess, the two biggest natural anti-inflammatories that you can have in your diet. Okay. And do, do we still have time for a question? Um, so you said a five serving of a vegetable a day. So if, if, Myself, I can't achieve that, you know, five servings. So what, what can I do? Work, work at things like combining it, green veg and juice. Um, work at um, trying to get, you know, some with your breakfast, whereas people say that they don't. Um, I would always aim to try and increase a veg a day. It, it is quite simple when you put a recipe to, together um, mm -hmm. to combine. Um, you know, try and get three with your lunch and not have the five that you're trying to pull together at dinner time. So I always say, you know, try and get, you know, two with each meal. Um, shouldn't be a hard ask. Yeah. Yeah, recipe, that's a good idea. Yeah, yeah recipes. And please, please DM me if you'd like some recipes. I think that's all we've got time for, Nicole. Thank you. Thank you. Um, hopefully that was valuable. And um, come and see me. <laughs> All right.